How are you doing, folks? Tim out of two uh, for OutstandingPoker.com. I have a video today. Uh, I've jumped up to twenty-five cent, fifty cent to sort of continue my series on how to think like a pro and get into analyzing some uh, interesting hands a little bit deeper than uh, what we've done in some previous videos. Uh, thinking about all the, the various uh, implications and factors when uh, making a decision at each street and uh, taking into consideration the opponent, uh, future potential cards. Opponent's ranges, your range, your perceived range by your opponent, that sort of thing. So I want to dive a little bit deeper into that again today. I wanted to start out the first uh, couple minutes just talking about a, a hand that was posted in our forums by uh, Coup de Flu, uh, who uh, ran into an interesting spot that I think probably a lot of people get into um, at micro stakes and when they're starting out at poker is where um, how to place mid pocket pairs and uh, a common I think mistake that a lot of people make uh, with these type of hands so uh, just getting into the hand I don't want to uh, show what uh, the results are I hope you guys didn't see that I just covered it up <laughs> so uh, don't rewind it yet you can see the results uh, after the, the uh, discussion here so um, just coming into uh, Coup de Flu's read on the villain here. Uh, the villain's a 21-8 guy with 20% raise first on the button. Uh, so pretty tight guy, actually. Like, very tight. 20% um, raise first on the button is extremely small. I mean, the guy is just playing his two cards, doesn't think too much about position or, or anything. He's just waiting for pretty strong hands to get involved. Um, so we'll take that into consideration. He has a C butt flop percentage of something like 70%, which uh, is pretty normal, so I'm not fooling the flop ever. Uh, he C bets the turn about 50% of the time, um, et cetera, et cetera. We'll get to the turn or river in a second, but I think the interesting play is um, flop play. Um, coming to uh, some of the responses, you can read the thread. It's on, it should be on the front page right now, uh, plus EV play. So uh, it's five cent, ten cent. Coup de Flu uh, has pocket sevens. Um, he calls in the small blind, uh, a raise by our villain here, who we said is twenty one eight. Uh, pretty straightforward, but well, not even straightforward. Just mainly just on the tight side. Um, so it's a pretty standard call, I'd say, in the small blind with pocket sevens against a guy who plays straightforwardly. Um, and you can, uh, if, if he shows a lot of aggression post flop. Uh, you can likely lay down the hand pretty confidently. Um, so flop comes 10, 5, 3, rainbow uh, here on the flop. Coup de flu checks, which is totally standard. I definitely wouldn't be leading in um, to a guy that's C betting 70% of the time. Uh, so the guy bets, uh, looks like about two thirds pot, and coup de flu check, uh, check calls. And I think that's the right play. And some of the responses in the thread were talking about how a lot of people will check raise in this spot with a, a hand like pocket sevens. Um, sort of to quote unquote see where they're at or raise for information and and I want to can't stress enough that I think that's the wrong play um, to be raising there. Reason being is that once again coming back to our sort of framework for w when we're betting is ask yourself is a worse hand calling uh, or is a better hand folding? I think when you check raise a hand like pocket sevens there the answer is uh, unequivocally no. Like there's no worse hand that's calling. Uh, there's no real draws there, and there's no better hand that's folding. Like I, I can't see him just auto folding a, a pair of tens there. Um, I mean, if the guy's super tight, maybe he's folding the unlikely hand of pocket eights, but it's very, very rare. So I don't think uh, using that sort of analysis, like basic analysis, which you should be doing um, as a first step, is is a good uh, reason for check raising there to sort of see where you're at. And I know mid pocket pairs when there's overcards on the board are sort of tough to play. 